Today we are continuing on with our NHL offseason review series. We're finishing up the Atlantic Division and taking a look at the two-time Stanley Cup champion, the Tampa Bay Lightning. What have they made for moves? Will they still be able to compete for a Stanley Cup? Are they the same team? We'll discuss that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, of course, as I mentioned here, we're looking at the Lightning on their offseason review series. Uh, taking a look at what they've done for moves and can they still be a contender? They've had to shed a lot of players here uh, trying to become cap compliant. It's not been easy. But first up, I want to take a look at what their objectives were this offseason. So obviously, they had to become cap compliant. They had a lot of LTIR deals on the books that they had acquired to kind of exceed the cap by a lot of money. And a lot of that was going to be expiring. So they had to, no choice but to shed some uh, players and some salary here. Of course, they had expansion to deal with. And of course, while doing this, they're trying to figure out if they can kind of rejig this roster, keep the key core parts, and still be able to contend for a Stanley Cup. So let's look at what they've done to determine if they've accomplished that and if they're a better team, worse team, or where things stand with them heading into uh, the, uh, you know, not too far away from training camp for next season. So first up, let's take a look at the moves they've made via trade and how they handled the expansion draft. Uh, obviously, when it came to expansion, they made a lot available to the Kraken and let them choose, uh, which was probably wise in a way because they knew they were going to lose a, a decent, substantial piece here. And they end up losing Yanni Gord, uh, who was their number three, but really you could argue number two center. I mean, even though they were called the third line with uh, Gaudreau, Coleman, and Gord, they basically played uh, the second most. So you, there, in a lot of ways, they were the second line, the Stamkos line, often played a little less than them, um, and were basically the third line. So uh, Gord was a huge part of their last two cups. He's uh, having shoulder surgery, will not be able to start the season on time. Will be a late start for him, but it's still a nice pickup for the Kraken, who can uh, get a player with a couple of Stanley Cups to his name, uh, play with a lot of grit, determination, play a good two-way game, and uh, really contribute over there. So they lose Gord in expansion. It could have been Palat, it could have been Kalorn, or a young defenseman like a Cal Foot, uh, and they chose... Uh, you know, the uh, the center iceman here who has been quite a story after going undrafted and taking the hard way and the long road to the NHL. He's kind of carved out a, a nice stretch of hockey and a good career for himself here in recent years. When it comes to trades, they had no choice but to try to move some players out. They couldn't keep everyone. Uh, they ended up moving uh, Mitchell Stevens to Detroit, of course, to Steve Eiserman, a player who's, uh, you know, very familiar with for a six-round pick. They ended up trading Barkley Goudreau, which was smart. They knew they were going to lose him via free agency. Found a team that wanted to sign him with the Rangers, traded him for a seventh round pick. It's not much, but it's something more than you get through free agency. Made a deal with Chicago to move on from Tyler Johnson. Finally, that's been a challenge the last couple of years as they've attempted to unload that deal. And in return, they get Brent Seabrook so they can still play the LTIR game and still spend above the cap. So really, the shenanigans with that are going to continue. They're still within their right to do that. Uh, it's completely legal, so there's really nothing anybody can say about it. Uh, I call it shenanigans just because they're they're pretty smart and they know how to, uh, you know, as much as a lot of people don't like it, it's within the guidelines. It's not illegal. And they're exploiting something that if any other team was doing it, fans of that team would be totally fine with it if they were winning Stanley Cups. That much I can guarantee. Um, but, of course, like I said, those, those are your trades. So, I mean, they've unloaded, uh, you know, Tyler Johnson. They've unloaded Mitchell Stevens here. They lose Yanni Gord to, uh, to expansion. They trade Barkley Goudreau, who was going to, leave at via free agency and then otherwise uh, through other means here through free agency they also lost Blake Coleman who was the third member of that of the other line with Gord and Gaudreau goes to Calgary in a long-term expensive contract uh, there's no way they can afford to keep him as much as they'd like to uh, that was a huge loss so that entire line that was basically their second line some call it their third line um, is completely gone so you know that's going to be that's going to hurt for sure now, before we continue looking at the rest of the offseason for the Lightning, I do need to pause for a moment and acknowledge one of our channel sponsors, Exter Smart Wallets. Top Shelf Hockey is proud to be sponsored by Exter. Forbes calls Exter the most successful smart wallet brand in the world. They certainly have high quality products, high grade leather. You can put all your cards in your wallet with RFID protection and you can track it worldwide. That's the best part. You don't have to worry about losing your wallet and not being able to track it down. They have a great selection of products to choose from here, a variety of colors and styles, something to surely help for everyone. As you can see in the demonstration here for the product I have, this is a beautiful packaging, high quality. When you open it up, you get a high quality wallet with lots of slots for your cards. 
You have yourself a money clip if you want to carry cash on you here as well. Uh, and certainly, as you can see, the quality is outstanding. And here you can see the switch where you can help open up your cards. You just one little click and boom, everything fans out right in front of you. Easy to access. Your cards are protected. And here's the back where you have yet another slot. A terrific overall product. And I can't recommend these enough. Extra ships worldwide. And you can check out the link down below in the description as well as the pinned comment to buy yours today. Thanks very much for watching that promotional video. I do greatly appreciate it. Let's jump back in here into talking about the Lightning. They also lose long-time backup goalie Curtis McLean. He's been there for the past few years. He moves on. I'm not sure if he's actually going to get much of a role anywhere, but uh, they take, uh, obviously, going in a new direction when it comes to backup goaltending. They lose a couple defensemen, including David Savard, who fit in nicely, uh, who they acquired at the deadline from Columbus. Uh, of course, Luke Shen, who was there for both Cups, he uh, departs via free agency as well. Um, so, you know, really overall, they've, they've shed a lot of players. You know, we're looking at about – you know, up around eight players now, eight, nine guys that are not there anymore. But, of course, you got to remember, you still have Braden Point. You still have Kucherov. You still have Stamkos. You still have uh, uh, Andre Pilat. You still have Alex Kalorn. I mean, those are, you know, five guys that play in your top six, top nine that are the same. You know, you still have Hedman. You still have McDonough. You know, you still have Chernak. You still have Ruda. Uh, you know, there's a lot of the blue line that's still the same. You still get Vasilevsky between the pipes. So really, as much as the outside perimeter parts here kind of change, really for the most part, it's not that bad, not that drastically different. Now, who have they brought in to replace some of this cast of characters that have been so successful over the past couple of seasons? Well, they've certainly uh, went shopping and brought in some veteran guys. They brought in a guy like Pierre Edward Belmar. Uh, Belmar played... Uh, the last couple of seasons between the Avalanche, played with the Vegas Golden Knights, and has had a lot of playoff experience in the last few years uh, and has had a lot of success. He's a good, you know, either number three, number four center, good on faceoffs, can kill penalties. Uh, is he going to, he basically will kind of replace Yanni Gord. But he, he's not going to be the same guy, though. I think Gord's certainly uh, a little bit more dynamic, probably a little bit more offense, a little bit faster, but he can do a lot of the same things, but just not quite at a cheaper cost a little bit older too so like you know a good player though i mean he's probably going to end up being on the fourth line so he won't exactly replace gord um but still we'll have to play a similar role i mean you're probably going to see more like a guy like sorelli continue to elevate his game too which would basically you know be even though sorelli and stankos were like that third line last year they're basically going to have to be the second line now and they're going to have uh, other guys kind of be re-insulated around them. But uh, obviously those are, you know, some key pieces. But Belmar will fit in nicely. You've got Corey Perry, who they've played against in the last two Stanley Cup finals, last year in Montreal, the year before with Dallas. So they player they know very well from playoff battles. Of course, a lot of the players there know him well from other experiences as well. Uh, so I would suspect that your fourth line is likely going to be Belmar, Perry, and Maroon. Uh, Perry Maroon both been a lot of Stanley Cup finals lately so clearly that's uh, you know a good thing two veteran guys you guys know each other way back from the duck days as well um, can be your grinders your uh, you know offensive guys can bang bodies and really play physical style and be uh, you know good depth players there and just add even more experience to an already deeply experienced group over the past couple of years uh, so that's essentially going to – all the, those two guys with Maroon will make up your fourth line. And they've also brought in uh, Brian Elliott to be the new backup goalie. So another NHL goaltender has been around a long time. He should be more than capable of filling the shoes of Curtis McElhaney. I would suspect with such a strong team in front of him that his, he's probably going to put up some pretty good numbers too. They bring back Zach Bogosian, uh, who was with them for their first cup run. Um, didn't sign last year because there really wasn't room to do so. Went to the Leafs. Now he's back in Tampa. Um, so when he signs a cheap longer term deal, it gets like it was two or three years. So, you know, Bogosian gets a great contract, uh, under a million bucks for a chance for, you know, basically steady term on a steady contender in the U S his family is American. So he didn't want to have to be traveling a lot between Canada and the U S for family reasons because of the border closures. And he dealt with a lot last year with COVID and all the restrictions. So thought it was better for personal reasons to play in the States, which I understand. And it makes a lot of sense. So, you know, Bo goes back in Tampa on a fairly cheap contract, which is really great for the team. You can't beat that at all. Uh, they've had to re-sign uh, re some young guys. They've re-signed Eric Chernak to a good contract. They've re-signed Jan Ruda. 
Uh, they had to re-sign Alex Beret Boulay, as well as some of their other younger prospects that are still looking for more of an opportunity, like Boris Kachuk and Taylor Radish. Uh, they get longer term, like they get like three years and under a million bucks, so they have more of a chance to develop here. A guy like Matthew Joseph will certainly step up, and he'll be one of the guys that will play in like that, that new third line uh, that, that Gord Gaudreau and uh, Coleman provided last year. Same goes for Ross Colton, who scored a Stanley Cup winning goal, another player that was RFA needed to be re-signed. I would think that Coleman, I would think that, uh, that Ross Colton and Matthew Joseph will be at least two-thirds of that third line. So, you know, realistically, you know, you've got, uh, you know, like I said, your other guys that have consistently been in, the, in your top six. Like you get your, your duos, basically, Point and Kucherov, Sorelli, Stamkos. You throw in Palat and Kalorn to fill out the, your, your top six. So your fourth line is basically Perry, uh, Maroon, and Belmar. You've got guys like uh, Matthew Joseph and uh, Ross Colton here on your uh, on your third line. Maybe Beret Boulay is the other member of that line as well. And overall, you get yourself a pretty solid team. I mean, your third line is going to be younger and less experienced, but still fairly dynamic. And then you've got a blue line that's largely the same. You know, you're only looking at one or two different pieces back there. And a guy like Bogosian is not really new, right? So uh, Cal Foot should get more of an opportunity this year. You still got Vasilevsky. Like to me, this team was extremely well managed. They shedded a lot of bodies to become cap compliant. They pick up Brent Seabrook so they can continue the LTIR uh, loophole, I guess we'll call it for now. Uh, and really, at the end of the day, here they've spent right to the cap. Like they're they're so tight to the cap, like they could not squeeze in a whole lot more. I think it's within like seven thousand or something ridiculous. That's how um, how an, an adapted they are to kind of right to the T here. On the cap, so like you know, they're two times Stanley Cup champions for a reason. Uh, they know how to manipulate this cap system to be their best of their advantage to get every last cent out of it. And I would not be shocked if they continue to maybe add another contract that can go into that LTIR pool. I wouldn't not saying that I have no reason to say they are doing it, but it wouldn't surprise me if they did. Now, one thing we always look at in the series is do they have any unfinished business? And, you know, you can make an argument here that, for the most part, they don't. They've really taken care of everything. Everybody needs to be signed to sign. They've got things wrapped up a lot earlier than they did last year. Like I said, the only thing I can see is they have a lot of young players still looking for an opportunity. They could move out a prospect or two if they wanted to, um, you know, kind of tempt the team to give them another LTIR contract. But that's about it. And I'm not really sure if they will or they won't. They don't really need to. So, um, you know, they may or may not have trouble adding at the deadline. But, you know, we don't know what their full health situation is going into the season and all that. So we will see what happens. But this Lightning team, I think, at the very least, they're going to be a playoff team. I think that's fair to say. No matter what division, we're going back to the Atlantic Division here, of course. But, like, they're still going to be a strong team. And they're going to be a, a force again. And they will have a shot at three-peating because the core pieces that were largely responsible for the Cup victories are still there. So let me know what your thoughts are on the Lightning offseason. Do you think they can contend for a third consecutive Stanley Cup? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news and rumors on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time.